So for instance, if you have the square root of 15 minus the fraction 3 fifths and square root of that, how would you approach that? Now, in the previous section, we did adding and subtracting of uh, radicals, and we learned that the radicals have to be the same to add or subtract them. Now, clearly, 15 is totally different than 3 fifths, so we can't add or subtract these straight away. So what you need to do when you're confronted with this is, is, is reach in your brain and pull out all of the tricks that we have learned. I, I don't want to call them tricks. All of the rules that we have learned on how to deal with radicals. As long as you are doing legal things, you're never going to really go the wrong direction because you'll always be doing, at least, you, you may not be going the direction you want, but at least you'll, be, you'll not be making mathematical mistakes. So we need these radicals to match in order to be able to add or subtract them. And clearly they don't. So the first thing we want to do is see if we can simplify these radicals. Now this can be written as 3 times 5. And I can't break 3 down anymore, and I can't break 5 down anymore, and this is not a pair, so I can't really simplify this. So I think I'm even more stuck. But then I look at this one, and I'm like, okay, 3 and 5, I can't do anything with that. But I remember that when I have a radical surrounded, or a square root of a fraction, I can write it like this. Uh, so the first thing is just going to be square root of 15. I can't change that. But the second thing, I can write it as square root of 3 over square root of 5. Remember, when you have a fraction inside a radical, you can just make it the radical of the top divided by the radical of the bottom. Now, that doesn't really help me too much yet, but the next thing I start realizing is, and I told you this many times before, we never really ever want to have a, a radical in the denominator of a fraction. It's just a general rule. So how do we get rid of it? We have to multiply this whole fraction by the square root of 5 on the top divided by the square root of 5 on the bottom. So we're basically multiplying by 1. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll have the square root of 15 that's coming along for the ride minus square root of 3 over square root of 5. And we're going to multiply this by the square root of 5 divided by the square root of 5. Because effectively all we're doing is we're taking this and multiplying by 1. Now what happens is, what's going to happen on the top? We have two radicals multiplied together, which means we can multiply the insides. So moving along to the next line here, the square root of 15, of course, not, isn't going anywhere. But then on the top of this fraction, we're going to have the square root of what? 3 times 5, which is going to be square root of 15. And on the bottom, what are we going to have? It's going to be, we can multiply the insides of these radicals, which will be square root of what? 5 times 5 is? 25. So to be the square root of 25, but you all know that the square root of 25 is just 5. So the radical disappears, and that's what we're trying to do. We don't like this radical in the first place. So by multiplying top and bottom by square root of 5 over square root of 5, effectively the inside of the radical survives, based on the process we just saw, and the top has just become something different. So we look at this, and we say, well, wait a minute, we're making some progress now because now the radicals are the same, but we still can't really subtract them. Why? Because this is a fraction over 1, when you think about it, square root of 15 over 1, and this is a radical with a denominator of 5. We, ha we have to use the same rules of fractions that we used ages ago. We, ha we cannot subtract these until these denominators are the same. But we know how to fix that because we've done lots of work with fractions. So this will be square root of 15, uh, and you can think of it as square root of 15 over 1. And what we want to do to make these denominators match is multiply 5 over 5. And then this we'll just leave alone, the square root of 15 over 5. Remember, we can do anything we want to get a common denominator multiplication-wise. We're multiplying by 5 because we have a denominator of 5 right here. So once we do that, on the top, 5 times the square root of 15, you just write it literally as 5 times the square root of 15. But this new denominator here is 1 times 5 is 5. Then you have minus the square root of 15 over 5. And now you should be able to look at this and realize that now you have a common denominator, right? So the answer when you do this subtraction is going to be over 5. Now in the top you have this term minus this term. So probably the cleanest way to write it is just to say 5 times the square root of 15 minus the square root of 15. This is just subtracting the numerators and keeping the 5 as a denominator. That's how we do all fractions, right? We subtract the fractions, we subtract the numerators, the common denominator stays the same. But now in the top, we have like terms. Square root of 15, square root of 15. So 5 minus 1 gives us 4 times the square root of 15. And on the bottom, the denominator stays the same. This is about the simplest, simplified way that you can that you can do, handle or get for that problem. 
So it's really important that you understand the process here. And we're going to do another problem, but basically um, we couldn't do anything with the first guy. So with the second guy, we broke it up into radical over radical. We then multiplied to get rid of the denominator here and make it into a number instead of a radical. Once we did that, we just had to find a common denominator. We multiplied this fraction by 5 over 5 to get a common denominator. Then it becomes a fraction problem. We subtract the fractions uh, there. Uh, I told you these problems would be a little more challenging, um, but ultimately you're using the same rules that we have learned so many, many uh, lessons ago. Let's take a look at another one. 3 times the square root of 18 plus uh, the fraction 2 25ths, and we'll have the square root of this whole thing. So same thing, we have a radical which is a square root of 18 and we have a radical of 2 25ths. So what we want to do is simplify all of these radicals as much as possible to try to add them. Obviously we can't add them now. So let's take a look at the first one. We have 9 times 2 can give us 18 and we have 3 times 3 can give us 9 and we're looking for pairs. So we know that we can pull out a 3 uh, from that radical. Now in here, it's tricky because we have a fraction, so we'll do the same thing we did last time. We'll make it square root of 2 over square root of 25. So let's go ahead and rewrite the problem here. We have a 3 from here, but we have another 3 that we're pulling out. So the 3 from here is on the outside plus, or I'm sorry, multiplied by the 3 that we're pulling out. The square root of 2 is left behind. That's where that comes from. And then when we get here, we'll just break it up as follows. Square root of 2 over square root of 25. All right, so what we have here is 3 times 3 is 9 times the square root of 2 plus 2 square root of 2 over what is the square root of 25? It's just simply 5. All right, so now we're, we're getting and making some progress. We want to be able to add these, but this is a fraction with a denominator of 1, and this has a, a fraction denominator 5, so we're going to do the exact same thing that we did last time. We'll rewrite this as 9 times the square root of 2 uh, and we'll be multiplying this by something to help us get a common denominator, 5 over 5. And then we still have the plus square root of 2 over 5. So when we write it, we multiply the coefficients. We're multiplying this stuff. The square root of 2 just kind of hangs along, just like x or y if it were a variable. The 5 gets multiplied by the 9, giving us 45 times the square root of 2 over 5. Because 5 times the implied 1 here, we're just multiplying fractions. 5 times 1 is 5. And then we're going to continue on with plus root 2 over 5. So now we have a fraction problem. We have some number on the top, denominator 5, some number on the top, denominator 5. So we add the tops. We have like terms. So 45 plus 1 is going to give us 46 square root of 2. And the denominator, just like any fraction, when you have a common denominator, it stays along for the ride. So 46 square root of 2. Um, over 5. That's the final answer. All right. We're going to give ourselves lots of room to work the next couple because I don't want to clutter the screen too much. Uh, the next one is, let me move up just a little bit more. The next one is really interesting. What if we have 5 elevenths minus 11 fifths? We'll put a, a square root around each one of those and want to subtract them. We know we can't subtract them straight away because these are unlike terms. They're, this fraction is totally different than this one. They're not the same number. So we're going to do the only thing we really can do. We're going to split this into square root of 5 over square root of 11. Square root of 5 over square root of 11. The minus sign comes along for the ride. And the second one just becomes square root of 11 over square root of 5. Now, we want to acknowledge the fact that we have a square root in the bottom here and a square root in the bottom there. We don't like that ever. So we want to kill that first and we want to just have numbers in the bottom. So how do we get rid of the square root of 11? We multiply this whole thing by square root of 11 over square root of 11. So we're multiplying by 1. So we'll have square root of 5 over square root of 11. And in order to get rid of that, we're going to be multiplying by square root of 11 over square root of 11. So we're multiplying by 1 effectively, like I said. The minus sign comes along for the ride. The second fraction is square root of 11 over square root of 5. And we're going to do the same sort of trick, but in this case, we're going to multiply by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. You always multiply by whatever the radical is in the denominator. So here, what do we have for this guy on the top? When we multiply these radicals together, remember, whatever's on the inside can just be multiplied and joined together. So 11 times 5 is going to give you 55, the radicals around that. 
Now here, remember, when we multiply the square root of 11 times the square root of 11, um, there's lots of ways to think of it. You can basically multiply these, which will be 11 squared on the inside, take the square root of that, so what you're going to have on the bottom is just going to be 11. The shortcut way to think about it is when you multiply a radical times itself, basically the 11 just kind of comes out. Because whenever you go through all the trouble of multiplying 11 times 11, you're going to find out that if you take the square root of that number, you're just going to get 11 at the end of the day. Minus sign comes along for the ride. Here we have 11 times 5 again, so it'll be uh, square root of, uh, let me change colors here, it'll be square root of 55 again. But on the bottom, same sort of thing, multiply these, 5 times 5 is 25, takes the square root of that, and so the answer is going to be 5. So at the end of the day, we're at this intermediate step where we have this fraction minus this fraction. Now we want to be able to subtract them, but we can't because this is a fraction with two completely different denominators. So you want to find a common denominator. But unfortunately, 11 and 5 are very different from each other, so the easiest way to find the common denominator is just multiply this fraction by 5 over 5, and then multiply this fraction by 11 over 11. So you can kind of cross multiply the denominators here. So at the end, you're going to have root 55 over 11, and you'll multiply this fraction by the other denominator, of course doing it 5 over 5, so we're multiplying just by 1, and then we'll have root 55 over 5, and then we will multiply this one by 11 over 11. So we're cross-multiplying the denominators essentially. Now what are we going to have here? This is a number times a radical. Clearly this number can't go inside, so the way you write it is 5 times the square root of 55 over, what is 11 times 5 here on the bottom? 55, the minus sign comes here. Multiply these two, you just have 11 times the square root of 55 over, multiply these, you get 55 on the bottom. So now we have a fraction with two completely identical denominators, and they're subtracted, and so we can just take this minus this numerator, and since these are like terms now, we can just do 5 minus 11, which is going to give us negative 6 root 55, because we're just subtracting like terms, and on the bottom, we're just going to have the same common denominator like we always do for fractions. So the answer is negative 6 square root of 55 divided by 55. I know that's ugly, and I showed a lot of steps, and there's a lot of fives running around here, but that's basically what we're doing. And this is why algebra is so important, and it builds on so many things. Because notice what we've done in this problem is we've learned, we've used so many things. We've taken this fraction. We've used the property of splitting up the radical divided by the radical. Same thing here. Then we use the rational. We called it rationalizing the denominator, getting rid of this root by multiplying by root 11 over root 11. Same thing here. So that was another rule. Then when we get it down to this step, we realize we have different denominators, so we have to go back and think about fractions, and we have to get a common denominator here and here, which we've done so many fraction problems, and so you have to multiply that. And then you do the subtraction, you have to remember how to subtract these like terms on the top, which we just learned in a few sections ago. Um, so it, it really is a lot of things to keep track of, but that's why we do so many problems. So let's do one last one. Five times the square root of 3 multiplied by square root of 6 plus 2 times the square root of 8. So what we have here is a number, which involves a radical, and we have something in parentheses. So we need to distribute this into this term and distribute it times this term. Now what's going to happen when we multiply this times this? The 5 will be multiplied by the implied 1 in front there, so it's just going to be 5. But the radicals will be multiplied together. We multiply radicals, we can multiply the numbers under the radical. So what we will have is the 5 times the square root of 3 times 6 is 18. Make sure you understand that. 5 times 1 is 5, 3 times 6 is 18 that lives under the radical. Now we multiply this times this. The 5 times the 2 is going to give me 10. So the numbers multiply together. But then separately, the square root of 3 gets multiplied by the square root of 8. So we multiply the numbers. 8 times 3 is 24. So it's the square root of 24. So what we have now is a new problem. 5 times the square root of 18 plus 10 times the square root of 24. Now we can't add them because these are unlike terms with unlike radicals. So let's try this. This will be 9 times 2 is 18. 3 times 3. We can pull out one pair of 3's. This, 
you, you have lots of choices, of course, but I'm going to write it as 8 times 3 is 24, and 8 can be written as 2 times 4 is 8, and 4 can be written as 2 times 2, so I've done everything I can, and I'm going to circle the pair of 2's. I don't have a match for this 2, and I don't have a match for that 3, so when I rewrite all of this, it's going to be the 5 is going to be sitting out in front, but now it's going to be multiplied by this this radical root 18, I can pull out a single 3, so it'll be times 3. The square root of 2 is left behind because this was left over. And we've done that in lots of problems before. And I'll do something similar here. The 10 will be sitting out in front, but now it's multiplied by this 2 that I'm able to pull out. But underneath the radical, what do I have? I have a 2 times a 3, right? So that's what's left over, 2 times 3. You could write it as 6 if you want. I'm just writing it as 2 times 3 now. Now in the next step, 5 times 3 is, we'll switch colors, 15 square root of 2 plus 10 times 2 is 20 and of course square root of 6. 2 times 3 is 6. All right, so am I done? Can I do anything more? I think you are done. Why? Because you want to add these together, but square root of 2 is different than square root of 6, so I can't add these any further. If I try to make this simpler, I can just do 1 times 2, so I can't make that radical any simpler. And if I try this, 2 times 3 gives me 6, but I can't break 2 down anymore. See if I try that, 2 times 3, and I can't break 3 down anymore, so I don't have any pairs. So ultimately, this is as simple as you can go. This is as simple as you go, and they're just different. They're, like, they're unlike terms. So I can't add them anymore. So this is what, how you would leave it on your paper. So in this lesson, we've covered a tremendous amount. And we're not done with this topic, but we are... Um, we're making great progress. These problems were a little bit challenging, you know, and you have to kind of just go through and, and, and apply all of the rules that we've learned along the way. And I've tried to show you some examples to give you a head start in that direction. Make sure you can do all of these yourself. It's really important to grab a sheet of paper, solve them yourself, even if you've already seen them, and then follow me on to the next lesson. We have a few more problems uh, to teach you how to handle adding and subtracting radicals in algebra. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.